You're listening to the Call Kent podcast, where Kent C. Dodds answers questions and gives insights to software engineers like you. Now, let's hear the call. Hey, Kent. John Vandeveer here, staff software engineer, 10 plus years of experience, calling in from Northern Virginia. Thanks for taking my call. And I recently came across a blog article, I think it was November 2022, describing a migration you did from Postgres to SQLite using a, a LightFS solution. And I was curious to hear your updated thoughts in 2025. Is this an architecture that you recommend? That's the high level question. Maybe there's three lower level questions under that. So the first would be the greenfield question. If you were going to build a solution like this today, would you make that same election? Two would be on alternative architectures. So my own blog is statically rendered. And I, obviously, there's trade-offs there. So when I'm blogging, it's typically from the same machine where I code. So it's not a big deal to me. Uh, another architecture would be SuperBase. So I like reaching for SuperBase these days. So those would be some of the alternative architectures. Love to get your thoughts on that. And then the third would be for what do we recommend to other people? So this LightFS thing could be a really great fit for you. And is that a general case or a special case? Is this a solution we should be recommending for a lot of other applications? Or is this something that kind of applies to your system, but we wouldn't recommend other people pick it up all the time? Is it senior friendly, beginner friendly? I think I read in the article that you created a utility that would become a library as part of this. So would that be a sign that an early career folk maybe shouldn't make this election? Uh, those are some of the questions that I had. I know I threw a lot at you there. Would love to hear your um, updated thoughts on whatever bits you find interesting. Thanks. And that was the call. Here's what Kent had to say. Hey, John. Thanks for the question. This is great. So, um, yeah, uh, the the short answer to your question is yes, absolutely. LightFS is uh, still fabulous. Uh, I'm very happy with using SQLite, LightFS, uh, Prisma. Um, all of those architectural decisions have been solid for uh, my own site and for other um, apps that I've built since then. And I would continue to do this. Um, and I went beyond that and made what's called the Epic Stack, which is a, a starter project, um, which you can just like run a command and get uh, all of the things like uh, authentication and testing and database uh, models and, and migrations and deployments, everything. Um, and so that's uh, the Epic Stack represents the way that I build uh, applications. And of course, there are some apps that aren't going to fit well with the Epic Stack necessarily. Um, uh, like local first isn't going to really benefit a whole lot from uh, SQLite um, and uh, like LightFS and stuff like that, uh, if you were building something like that, or or maybe um, you need to have many different clients. Um, and so you've got a, a mobile client and, and a um, the your web app and stuff. And so you want to have each one of those uh, access the database separately. Uh, even that you could um, have something like that work with LightFS where uh, you would just have uh, a application that serves as the, the backend for all of these different clients. And so you still could use the Epic stack for that. You just um, would build these as uh, kind of separate apps and then they would communicate with your Epic Stack app uh, to deal with the database uh, rather than connecting directly to the database. So it's it's still possible uh, to make that work, but um, there could be benefits to um, uh, to going with something more like Postgres or Superbase or something like that um, there. So anyway, for uh, for lots of the apps that um, people are typically building, though, uh, the Epic Stack is fabulous and it uses LightFS. Uh, there are a number of things that it's missing, um, and I've, uh, to be frank, kind of neglected it over the last six months, but that's because uh, I've neglected everything uh, for the last six months, everything except for um, building the house that I'm in right now and the studio that I'm in right now. Um, and so now that that is all uh, pretty much supposed to be done uh, and uh I'm, I'm pretty well settled in here. I will finally be able to start getting back into um, development and I'm planning on doing a lot of live streaming around the Epic stack. Um, and there's some stuff that's relevant to LightFS, which is why I mentioned that. Um, 
that uh, I, I will continue to work with Lightfast, and, and I think that's the the primary like recommendation uh, is using SQLite, Lightfast, and um, and then like there are a number of other things that I need to improve there. Um, it was like before October, um, Fly had a Lightfast um, uh, cloud service or offering that they gave where they would do automatic backups and stuff and you could restore from any point in history and stuff like that. They sunset that in October. And um, so because that was kind of in the middle of um, my moratorium on everything outside of the um, house <laughs> stuff, um, I haven't had a, a chance to decide what I'm going to do about that. Um, but Fly themselves have a, a pretty good solution uh, for that with Lightstream and Tigris. And so that's probably the direction that I'm going to go. Um, so we'll see when I uh, get into actually working on and developing that. Um, so yeah, uh, talking about like statically generating a blog and stuff like that, um, that is probably the way to go for a lot of people's blogs. Um, Astro is really good with something like that. Um, actually, React Router uh, version 7 it can do uh, static generation too. So that's probably what I would do if I was building a simple blog. Um, there are drawbacks to that. Um, my uh, website previous to the one that I have now, um, it was a Gatsby site and it just took forever to generate those pages. And I just had a couple hundred uh, because of my blog posts and, and uh, I also had podcasts and stuff on there. Um, and so that was a big pain and, and a lot of people felt that pain with static site generation. And so um, Gatsby Cloud became a thing and they started caching stuff, but then your cache is totally worthless if you change something in the footer and you have to blow it all away. It's, I, I, I just feel like that architecture is um, fund fundamentally flawed. And instead uh, you should have a server that can generate it, whether that be serverless or a long running server, I don't really uh, care so much. I personally prefer long running servers, but um, that's irrelevant to this specific uh, topic of um, static site generation. So you have a server that can generate the pages and then you have a CDN in front of that server that can save those pages. Um, and you have basically static site generation without having to regenerate every single page when you deploy, you just generate the page on demand. And um, if you're worried, oh, well, that means that the first user is going to have a bad experience loading the page, well, then you are the first user and you have CI that just hits uh, the pages that you're worried about. Um, and I, I just think that is such a more solid architecture because it gives you the option of saying, oh, you know what? I want to uh, server render some dynamic data on here. Well, okay, we can't cache it, um, that entire page anymore. So we'll turn off the CDN for that route. And now um, we're generating that page and, and uh, on every request. And then you cache um, the pieces of that page so that um, you can generate that page quickly, which is what my site does. And that's why I don't do static site generation for my personal site, because every single page that you go to is unique to you. Uh, and in, in fact, it's unique to that page load too. So if you go down, uh, go to one of my blog posts and scroll down, you're going to see three recommended blog posts. You refresh the page, you're going to see those change every time. And that's a server rendered um, experience because I didn't want to have things popping around and jumping and loading, whatever. You will notice that the images load, um, but that's just the way that the web works. It, um, you can't, you technically can server render images uh, with base 64, but it's not generally the best um, way to go about things. So um, yeah, so like, uh, it does actually server render a placeholder and that is base 64. So that's interesting, um, but it's very small. So anyway, um, I, I wanted to have every page be dynamic. And so I can't do static site generation. I don't want to anyway. I just cache everything and my site is way, way fast. Um, and it's all using LightFS and it's fabulous. I'm super, super happy with it. Um, and I, I've got like, I think seven or eight regions all over the world maybe. Um, and so it's fast wherever you are in the world. Um, my site in particular doesn't have a lot of mutations. Most blogs aren't going to have a lot of mutations. And so that's not gonna be a real concern either. So um, yeah, anyway, that's just a lot of thoughts and, and things to uh, that I wanted to share based on your question. I hope that is interesting and helpful to you, John. If you have any other follow-ups, feel free to call again. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. This has been the Call Kent Podcast. Learn more about Kent at kentcdods.com and get your own questions answered at kentcdods.com slash calls.